So uh, today we've got Steven and uh, he's got his Turtleback trailer. He's joined us on our Sierra trip and uh, it's great to have him and we're pretty impressed with uh, the capabilities of his uh, Turtleback right here. So we're going to have Steven uh, discuss his trailer and how he found us. And so tell us, where, where are you from, uh, Stephen? Well, my name is Stephen Hansen. Uh, I'm a retired PA living in Bakersfield, California, and I've been overlanding for uh, a little under a year. I actually bought this trailer after doing extensive research in February of 2022. Um, I initially wanted to do a rooftop tent on my Rubicon but then I started thinking about base camping and having to pack up every time you moved it. And then I watched a lot of YouTube videos on overlanders and looked at all of the different type of trailers. I ended up with Turtleback. I actually flew out to the factory in Arizona and Phoenix in a suburb and actually put my hands on the unit. And when I saw how the, uh, the trailer was built, how all the people that work there use these trailers, which helps in the development. So a lot of the innovations that you see on the trailer are from actual field use and saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we did this, like the spice rack you'll see in a minute and all of that. And I wanted something compact enough that I could pull it behind a stock Rubicon without any difficult whatsoever. And I actually have a hybrid 4xe Rubicon and it handles this trailer without any problems whatsoever. What's your... Um What's your gross weight right uh, right now? So the trailer itself, um, it, dry weight is 2,200, um, and I can carry up to 43 pounds of uh, 43 gallons of water. Uh, obviously, the tent is 152 pounds. The awning is about uh, 50, 60 pounds. I've got a shower on the other side that we'll look at in a minute. And you get all 230. Yeah, all tent on it. And I actually, when I bought the trailer, I picked out all the components and I had the people at um, the uh, Turtleback put everything on so when I went and picked up the trailer it was ready to roll. Nice. I've added um, the Rotopax um, uh, traction boards. I've got a four gallon uh, gas can. Uh, I talked them out of a, a, a garbage bag. <laughs> after so I even got the Turtleback uh, logo. Yeah, Turtleback garbage so That's bag. their own uh, trash bag then? Yes, it is. Okay. And it uh, it was pricey, but I said, hey, throw me a bone. I just <laughs> I spent a significant amount of money. Have the full slide. Uh, the, I got a Snowmaster 56 uh, refrigerator freezer. And love having a freezer, uh, being able to make uh, ice, um, having you know ice cream when I've got the grandkids out is really really nice. So especially out here, what we're at 8,000 feet. Yeah. We're in Menachi Meadows, and uh, you were offering us popsicles earlier. That's right. And so that's the nice thing about having these fridges and freezers. So this is not an on-demand, and a lot of the newer trailers do have on-demand water heaters. This is a six-gallon uh, Dometic water heater, which meets my needs. Um, if we come around to the nose box here, um, these were extra too. I had them put in the Molly panels, so I can just put all my Molly type uh, things and hang there. I haven't populated that nice. yet. Now is that composite or is that metal? This is aluminum. Aluminum. Yeah. Oh, it's even seen. Got the Turtleback little logo. They got it on everything, there, don't yeah. they? And I've got the little Turtleback like I have. Uh, if it were nighttime, I'd turn on my turtle lights, and I have a green light that shines through the turtle. Nice. Really look good. Um, in the nose box are basically all the electronics and I use it for storage. I've got a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. Um, I have a Victron Energy uh, DC to DC solar controller. This is my isolator for my 110 plug in the kitchen. Uh, I've got my 110 charger and I've got a 2000 watt Xantrex mm -hmm. um, uh, inverter, which I do like, you know, I do like to run some appliances and stuff like that. And then I use this for storage too. I throw my backpack in here. What, um, you have lithium? Yeah, lithium ion, 100 amp hour. Which uh, brand? I'm not sure to be honest with you. I ha I don't, I've never opened the box. And then um, here's my um, shower. It's just a plug-in hose that I throw into oh, yeah, the nose box, really cool. hot and cold water. And I've got the 23-0 shower, and I keep my cassette toilet in there uh, when I'm not showering. And I've yep. got a little, you get the same one, a little, a little board to put it on, to, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of keep it clean. I have 90 watts of Zamp solar. This will charge it from zero to 90 in about four hours in full sunlight. Very good. Um, 
I added these. These are shoe bags. So yeah, it's we got nice those. When you climb up yep. into the tent, you can drop your shoes into it if, if your shoes are dirty. Yeah, we got the same ones, and they slide along the exactly right, right along this rack right here. So this is like say, what's called sail cord. I also have an annex for this, so you slide the end of the annex in there, and yep. you you zipper all the way around, and it actually comes out to about here, and so. If with the grandkids in a pinch, I could actually sleep the grandkids on the ground yep. right here. Um, four inch memory foam mattress with a queen size bed up top. Um, this took some getting used to. I've never really worked with a boat before, but a lot of the electrical control panels here um, are, it's very similar to a boat. Here's your master turn off, my water heater switch, my controller for my Xantrax uh, um, uh, inverter and then all my switches and they actually put some rigid lights on the back too so i have some pretty heavy duty mm -hmm. lights that come on so you, you use this as a prep table yeah, this kind of works general workstation where i let's charge things everywhere inside of this you have 12 volt connectors which this one i put in another little extra usb in so i can run re regular 12 volt like a cigarette lighter and then everywhere like when you look on the back here I've got USB and 12-volt, um, um, here's mm -hmm. my rigid light. This is my water fill, and I can actually hook this directly into shore power, shore water. I have two connectors in here. One is just a fill, and one I can just plug a hose into it and just run water. Nice. Very good. Sure. And this is your kitchen area. What really, really sold me was the kitchen. And when this is all buttoned up, everything folds in. Oh, I can't close it because I got my drain in. Um, but there is just a ton of composite storage. I have um, dividers everywhere so I can really cut, customize how I store things. And I, I tend to, um, like I'll use these airbag things to kind of protect in between things. Oh I yeah, so they those. don't rattle around. Yeah, I save that sort of stuff. I've actually had to really start thinking about what I carry because when I first got started I really had no idea of what I really needed. Now as I've been overlanding and I've gone on some pretty long trips uh, I realize that uh, I really don't need as much stuff but I just love the work area here. It's like everything we're always constantly uh, tweaking our setup and one of my favorite things to cook on yeah, is my black the black stuff that's what we got omg yep and then of course you know i've got the sink i've got the cook partner mm -hmm. stove there's storage underneath all these areas where i keep my dishes and cups and and so so and on the, like the that. trail that we just did how does it seemed like it handled pretty good yesterday yeah um the my rubicon is you know towing package i've got front and rear lockers sway bar disconnect and the thing is just a tank you know the traction mm -hmm. and you worry when you're pulling a trailer because you know you're adding a significant amount of extra weight and stress on the vehicle uh but it just, what's your you know i think we talked about it earlier we're gonna, you got quite a bit of clearance right there yeah i do oh yeah it looks like what a good two feet or more i have to measure that and you, oh you got icon shocks yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are, the De these are the Dexter 10, like electric brakes, Icon shocks. This is all the latest. The, my year was the first year that they used this uh, type of suspension, in the, completely independent. And when did you get this? Uh, February 11th, 2022. So it's, you just had it for a few months now, yeah. about six months. And I love this here. Like, um, I've got a storage space up there. I could put a lifetime table up there. I usually yep. store my um, AstroTurf there. I've got... Um, pole storage or I put fishing poles in there nice I have extra poles for my 270 awning and they go in there um, and so I actually kind of dial things back a little bit I really want to you know take what I need make sure that I have the right recovery stuff uh, but just don't haul a lot of stuff around just to haul it around yep. and I think that's what every overlander does when they first get started because they just they don't know what it is exactly they need to cook a meal, you know, um, what types of uh, dishes and uh, appliances. I love having the 110 though, because I do have a three quart instant pot and I, I, it's just wonderful. It runs it right off here. I've got the 110 right here. Oh, good. So they ran it already back there for yeah, you. That's what that switch is for in the, in the nose box. It turns this plug on. So 
Very good. See, I, what I like about it too, it's it's totally unique, different. You got some of the same components as the off-grid trailer. And you know this was an idea. They're out camping somewhere <laughs> right? and they're cooking. Wouldn't it be cool if we just inset a spice rack there? You know, and so that's the kind of, and the customer service from Turtleback, I mean, I can call these guys 24 seven and I get a response. Uh, I had somebody expert, their electrical engineer, when I was having difficulty trying to get my electrical uh, settings correct, uh, I'd, I'd actually had put in the wrong battery size. I was telling it it was a 200 amp hour lithium ion when I only had mm -hmm. 100 amp hour, and so that changes all the parameters. It's like anything, when you get a trailer, get familiar with it first, you know, try to t play with it before you start... Um, and you know, my, messing with it too much and calling customer service to the point where like, hey, just get to know it and call them so you can figure it out. And that's what Kirsten and I did. The first couple of times we went out, we just went out to a campground up in the Kern River Valley and just set it up and take it down and set it up and take it down. And, and now I can do it pretty efficiently by myself. It's really nice to have a second person. It's, you know, it's different than the um, off-grid trailers where you have sleeping inside. Uh, it, so I, mean, I, uh, I have to really plan ahead, like when we're going to get ready to roll in the morning. Uh, you know, I've got to be prepared a little bit earlier because i got to put things away. Right. But this thing compacts down into the smallest little unit once you're ready to roll. Nice. So how, how did you find us there, Stephen? Uh, tons of research on YouTube. And so I think you watching, said we talked earlier, I posted the, uh, the flyer for this trip on Overland Bound. Exactly right. So the, um, uh, you know, you and I are both, uh, both members of Overland Bound One, and I had already been on some trips with them to Mojave Desert and other things. And uh, I came across the post one day about the broken down Overlanders, and it was a trailer group that uh, was trying to network with other trailer groups so we could go out in group outings and stuff. And as you discussed, and I was thinking, you know, I saw on the one website that it was the um, off-grid trailers, and I'm thinking, I think I even asked you about it, you know, well, I, I have a turtle back, you know, and then that's when we got in the whole conversation of, yeah, we're expanding this to everybody who's interested in yep. trailering and overlanding. Because, you know, as much as we are an off-grid trailer group, we're more of an overlanding exactly. camping, but we're out there to meet other people, and that's the whole goal of our group is... So and to meet trip, other people. This trip was one that I knew because I had been down here. This is my third trip. Yeah, you were a life saver because you came down a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, so I, I did recon for Broken Down Overlanders. We really uh, researched out where would be the best places to camp. We were thinking we were going to have a larger group at the time. And it's just been a great experience the last couple of days hanging out with these uh, the people who are the Broken Down Overlanders. And I'm honestly just having a fabulous time. That's awesome. Well, you know, we've appreciated you, Stephen, and your... Uh, knowledge your insight and um we we just to get to know you and that. yeah it's been really good especially on the campfire and you got to take us around the uh, menachee meadows in your in your cool jeep today and so that was a great experience so we look cool. forward to more trips with you steven and getting to know you even more i can't wait and, yeah it's been awesome and i can't wait for you to meet kirsten oh uh, yeah we uh, got to bring the wife next time yeah. So, she's coming. Good. Well, we'll tell her she uh, she's missing out, so we got to get her out here. Sounds great. Awesome.